Welcome back everyone to more Automation Empire. And in today's video, I want to show you the next step. So in our first video, we took a look at how do we get started, some of the basics that we're going to set up, how to begin uh, selling the different uh, cargo crates that we create, get them loaded on the truck, and so on. We also took our first steps in uh, our research tree, but now I want to show you sort of the next step that I have decided to take in this particular playthrough. Uh, first and foremost, I see the green over here on our research. So let's go ahead and claim our research. Okay, we'll come back to the research here in a moment, but here you can see our factories. And of course, they're now all enclosed. We can't really see anything going on until we click on them. Uh, unfortunately, right now, you can see all of your factories at once by holding down the tab key, but you have to hold it down. Uh, the moment I release it, they go back to the way they were. So hoping that gets changed in the future. Inside this particular factory, much like what we did in the very first video, here you can see some refiners hard at work uh, taking our raw ore and turning it into more refined goods. Uh, nothing has changed there. However, you do notice that now we have the crane up and running. And... So I've run this network, and of course, nothing you're gonna to see today is, is by any stretch of the imagination the most uh, efficient that it could possibly be. This is me just playing around, testing out, and, and seeing what works and what doesn't. So basically, I'm taking our coal ore out of the ground. I've got two of our crate makers that are busy making crates, and then I am running from this is actually the end. I ran it a little bit past where it needed to go so that we had room uh, for all of our cranes as they come down and through. But I have all of these stops for the cranes so that they can pick up if there is a, a crate in these locations. This is a pickup stop for them. So they will stop and they will grab those just like you see them doing over here on this side. So they run through here, turn the corner, do the same thing for these other crates and then they run inside of the factory. Now it's very important to realize that whenever you're doing these, you need to make sure that you have your doors on the second story. You don't need any doors on the bottom floor. For these, you need all of your doors up on uh, the top floor. And that's very important, especially uh, at one we're gonna look at here in just a moment where I deliberately not put any doors on the bottom floor. So having that door opening there allows us to run our crane uh, through here. And then you can see I'm running it uh, a little bit farther than we need to, just so I can have room for all of the cranes uh, to make their way to the end of the line and make sure they all pass this very last uh, drop off. So here you see them busy doing their work. This is so much quicker than our drone movement doing this very same thing like we saw in the first video. So this is a huge uh, step up. So in our first video, we dealt with the refiner, then we've got the step conveyor, and then finally the claw train, which is what you see moving back and forth, uh, moving the resources. And then uh, we'll come back to that in a few moments as to what uh, I'm planning on doing next in this cycle, but then you can see that we have our output coming out and I have plenty of doors here on this side. You can see as many doors as we can possibly have. And this is where the drones are simply coming in, uh, grabbing the finished goods and taking them out to uh, be sold on the truck. If we come down to our next factory, try out something a little bit different here, still using uh, the crane concept very much the same here. I've got the arrangement a little bit different here. I wanted to have a lot more room on the side here, just in case we had some backups. I wanted to keep the resources flowing uh, that we're getting from right over here. So I decided to make this side a little bit longer. Now we could have backed this down a little bit and made both sides a little bit longer. That certainly would have been doable, but uh, I decided that this was perfect line perfectly fine and you can see that we don't really have any type of a backup we're able to deal with the resources as they come right in so resources are being delivered in here finished goods come out here but 
there are no doors on this factory. You notice that all of the bottom floor is completely sealed up, and that's because I specifically did not want the drones getting in there. Now, when I first did this, I thought that might be the only way to keep the drones from making this long trip over to grab these, but then I later figured out that there was a much easier solution. So if you already have a factory where you have open doors across the bottom, don't worry about that. I'll show you in just a moment how you can uh, take care of the issue if you're in a position where you want to use the cranes for as much as you possibly can and not be stuck using the drones and their slow movement for everything. So here you can see on this particular factory we've got the drones that are coming by and if we go from the top down you can see that I've got the stops, the pickup stops, right over that final uh, block there and so they will pick those up and they bring them out to this row. And right now you can see that it is full up, which is perfectly fine because that won't last long. As you can see now, they're already coming to grab some and take them to be sold. All right, so as we move around, there are certain things you're going to notice. And a big thing we talked about in the first video is what happens whenever you see red on any of your pickup or drop-off locations? And we talked about how that means that they're off. The drones will not pick up from there. And that's the key. The drones will not pick up from these locations. You notice that uh, so far in this video, you've not seen the drones grab any of these crates. Same thing over here. It's hard to see from this angle, but now that this one's cleared off, you can see that we have red on both of these. I do not want the drones touching those because it is so much more efficient to have the cranes come through and grab those. So by turning these to red, the drones will simply ignore them, but the crane will not. The crane doesn't care uh, if these are on off, low, medium, or high. It simply doesn't matter. All the drone cares, or excuse me, all the uh, crane cares about is that you have put a pickup or a drop-off stop here and that there is an actual unload station or load station beneath it. That's all it cares about. So that makes things so much easier. Then we come over to uh, the unloading station and you notice that of course it's right near uh, the drop-off for the trucks but it is in yellow. I do want the drones to work this one and the reason is right now I don't have the ability for the cranes to load and unload the trucks. That's gonna be my next step. If we come back into our research, here is the claw track truck loader. And so it tells us here that we need a few things before we can make this happen. And the farther you get down into the research, it will start to have basic things that you need to accomplish. So at the very beginning, it didn't really care. As long as you had the research points, you could unlock it. Now, as we get a little farther down, we start to have stipulations. So first things first, we need to have 4,000 kilograms of uh, cargo. Well, we've met that. Then we also need to have research points, a total of 25 um, cases of research points using coal. So not the ore that we were taking originally out of the ground and we had our research stations over here. Now we need the actual finished product of coal, which is what is coming out of this particular factory. So we need 25 crates of that. So the question becomes, okay, how do we get it? Because out of the refiner, it comes in crates. So we need to get those from the crates and have a, the ability to get it inside the research station. So the way we do that is inside this factory, but of course we have turned green over here. All right, so we are not working on this side, so looks like this guy is taking all of our coal. But let's take a look at how we can take from the refined coal that is coming out of the refiner, how do we get it into the research station? And the way we do that is with a setup something like this. And of course, you could always scale this and have more of those, the similar to the way you can have as many of 
uh, the research stations as you want. But basically what you need is a loading station here. And I simply tell it what I want on there right now. I need the coal in there. So that's the only option that is available. I put it at high priority because I want them as much as possible to keep this thing uh, full. Now you can see our second research station is back going now that we've gotten some more coal in here. But it needs basically three blocks. So we need a loading station. And then here we've got the new block, the step conveyor, which is a much, much cheaper version of what we were dealing with early in the game, which is the load and unload station. These are 2,500 each. But now that we've unlocked the step conveyor, we only need one of each of these in a location rather than having to use them as our sole way of having conveyor from point A to point B. The step conveyor only 50 bucks each. So we put one of those directly under the intake because the intake will only accept from uh, this type of conveyor. And then so when it, once it's done, in fact, we're going to get to see it in motion now, empties it out, takes the uh, empty crate. So we have to have something to do with the empty crate. And for that, we use an unload station, which is set to destroy all crates right now. And the reason it's set for that is because anything that hits over here, we want it to be destroyed. Now, the empty buckets would automatically be destroyed. But I was having an issue where every once in a while, uh, I would have something other than what I listed here uh, to actually show up there and it would bog the system down because if there was already some inventory in here then it would freeze everything up uh, and nothing would move so I just simply turned on the destroy all crates option and we're good to go you can see the crates disappear and of course we're never very far from any of the resources whether it's iron we need or coal both of those are being processed right nearby so it shouldn't be a big deal and then as we get through some of these, uh, you can see here we need oil for this one. So we've got some work to do. That means we're going to have to get over here to the oil derrick before too long if we want uh, to unlock the farming option. If we want to go with the waterworks, and we talked about in our previous video where the water will actually improve the efficiency on things like the mining rig, connect the water up, you get a 30% increase in efficiency. So that is very nice and, and of course something we definitely want to do but in order to make that happen we need refined gold. So not the gold uh, ore as it comes out of the ground but we're going to need to process that and we need a hundred crates uh, processed by the research in order to make that happen. Uh, that's going to take a little while. We might even have to add uh, a few more research stations just to try to speed things up. But what I have found so far is that just having two research stations up and running is generally enough. Uh, things have been going pretty quickly. You can see at the bottom of the screen, 158,000 research points. So we're doing perfectly fine. And that's why I've stuck with just having a couple of these rather than uh, really trying to scale this out. So now we have a very similar setup over here at the bottom of the screen, uh, similar to what we looked at in the very first video. And then things start to expand over here on the other side of the road, which brings me to the next thing I've added, which is another input. We've got another road entry and exit. Uh, and that is so that we could start to use this side a little bit more and add in some more road stops. Uh, and of course, the more trucks we can get in here, the better off we're going to be as long as we can keep our production up to par. And so far, we've been doing a pretty decent job. But keep in mind, the drones are still pretty slow. And long term, we're going to try to get rid of them entirely or as much as we possibly can. So now I decided to expand out. And what was the most logical place to do so? Well, I figured I would go in this direction. These were fairly close to the other. I needed to put down a new grid, a new power station, uh, because I had run out of the 40 connections over on uh, the original one. So we dropped down another one of those. We've got 
our mining rigs up and going. All three of these are feeding into our container, which has this extremely long uh, rail system that is set up right now. And I have basically maxed it out with the number of carts you could have. If we click on it, you can see there are 16 of 16 carts. And the reason I did that is because I didn't want to I didn't want to jump right into building these uh, very high ramps. So I decided that I would just leave it on the ground for now and see how that works. So it was a test opportunity for me and it's been working out great. You can see that we have one side of, of the system here that is completely full. Now these guys will come by and pick that up. And then of course, ultimately, once the goods are done, they end up out here right next to the road so that they can be easily loaded. So even though this is very long and very ugly looking, quite frankly, uh, it's serving the purpose for now. And then eventually I will be trading that out for a much better setup. But for right now, you notice in the bottom left hand corner, 813,000, now 830,000. So the money is flowing quite nice. Um, I can just as I look around, I can see places where the efficiency can be increased, places where uh, production is coming to a standstill, either because of not enough resources or the delivery is not as efficient. But for the most part, this has been extremely enjoyable for me, uh, other than a few times where I got really frustrated with trying to figure out how to make some things happen, such as taking the crates of refined resources and turning them into something that I could get into the research station. All right, time to collect some more. All right, more research points. We now have 215,000. Uh, we should be getting close here. There we go. 25 of 25 crates processed of coal. And then we've met our uh, kilogram limit. We have enough research points. So we're going to go ahead and unlock the truck loader. So now we're in good shape. Um, a little bit later on, I will decide where I want to go next with this. But for right now, this is the next big step. I'm going to be working on uh, trying to expand because uh, there's a lot more deposits out here. I'm certainly going to want to get back here. That's where gold is. And we're certainly going to want to get uh, into mining and refining it. But so far, so good. And I wanted to bring you guys up to date and just show you what the next stage of development might look like in your factory. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned for more Automation Empire.